Oh, you the voice? Nah, not me. So if you're not the voice, who is? The people, man. The people's the voice. So what does that make you? That makes me the middleman. I'm the middleman. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Middleman Podcast. I am the man in the middle, Kevin Martinez, and today I am joined by exotic snake handler, William Snakespear. Oh, I'm sorry. Hey, how are you guys? <laughs> <laughs> how are you? Oh, man, how we doing? How we doing, man? So welcome to the Middleman Podcast. Uh, I just say your name was William Snakespear. Um, that's a really clever name. Good play on words. How did you come about to get that name? Uh, despite what you guys might think, I'm actually not clever enough to come up with a name like that. Uh, I had a friend of mine approach me, and they said it was uh, a better name for branding and marketing. It's a lot. My old name was W Toxins, and uh, it just wasn't that cool. Will Toxins. Okay, Will yeah. Toxins. <laughs> yeah. William Shakespeare. Nah, it's clever, bro. It's a really smart name. Yeah. Uh, you're on uh, TikTok as well as uh, Instagram, correct? Yep, yep. Okay. TikTok and Instagram. Uh, Facebook, too. Not Facebook as, as well. Though. Not popular. It's okay. Facebook yeah. is like a dying breed yeah, nowadays. Weird, yeah. The Middleman Podcast is popping on Facebook because it's a dying breed. Yeah. And if you feel like I really need Facebook, I'm going to do it. But I'd, uh, all right. <laughs> that's, that's besides the point. That's besides the point. <laughs> no, like, let's it. get back to it, man. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Um, how long have you been handling snakes, man? Uh, I've been keeping snakes ever since I was a kid. Uh, I got my first snake when I was uh, maybe like four years old. My dad was in the Navy. He was gone a lot. So he got me a little snake, and I'd run around thinking I was Steve Irwin. And... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so, but I didn't get into venomous snakes or I say the serious, like the more serious, more educated aspect of keeping until about maybe four or five years ago. Okay, okay. So four or five years ago, you know, you got that first snake. And what type of snake was that from your father? Uh, I got a ball python. It's the typical snake you see at Pet Smarts and stuff. Uh, yeah, they're not that cool. <laughs> That's pretty interesting, you know, and, and what an animal for your father to get. You know, like most parents get their kids dogs, cats, mouses. You well, know? the funny story is it's, his neighbor had two snakes, mm. and they were going to feed him. And my dad was like, you want to go watch the snake eat? And I was like, yeah, of course. You know, as a four-year-old, I was like, obviously, I want to see the snake eat. So we went over to my buddy's house, and it was awesome. And then after that, I just cried for a couple of days until he got me one. No shit. Yeah. How yeah. about that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, the feeding process of a snake is very, very interesting. Yeah, it's neat. So I was going to ask you, like, why snakes, you know, but what draws you towards them? Is it their skin? Is it their motion? Is it all the attributes that each one of them, they all have their own individual characteristics, right? Yeah, I, I don't know what it is about them. A lot of people ask me that, mm. um, especially with, like, the venomous side of it. They're like, why do you keep venomous snakes? Why would you do that? And it's just something that I love. I like looking at them. Uh, I enjoy keeping them, raising them. Uh, I think they're beautiful. And it, I, I always say I compare it to riding a motorcycle. I don't get it. It doesn't make sense to me. I, I wouldn't hop on one of those. It seems dangerous. But that's your thing. You know what I mean? So, obviously, yeah, rock out. Do what you love, you know? It's just kind of tough. Everyone's like, ah, snakes, kill them and stuff. And it's like, hmm, you just don't know them yet, you know? Yeah, that's very interesting. That, that's a very good comparison you made there. Motorcycles and snakes. Those are two things that... People don't quite understand why you do it because it is dangerous, you know, and you're out here doing some really dangerous stuff, but in a respectful manner, because I think you respect the animal and, you know, like they say, I'm in the, I'm in the HVAC trade, right? Yeah. I was terrified of electricity. Okay. Terrified. Okay. I, don't, I don't like fucking around with electricity and I still am, but everyone who tells you in the field is like, listen, you can't be scared of it. You have to give it its respect. Yeah, okay? absolutely. If absolutely. you give electricity its respect electricity although it's not an actual human being or anything like that will respect you in, in, in turn you know yeah so would you say it's like the same thing when it comes to handling uh any type of animal uh believe it eh i would say that snake doesn't care if you respect it or not mm. i should say you know what i mean as far as the danger aspect of it now most of these questions too i, I like when you say like the snakes i always think of the venomous snakes mm -hmm. Um, but a venomous snake doesn't care if you respect it or not. You you have to understand the behavior of that animal to keep that animal safe and yourself safe. Gotcha. So I mean I, I mean I guess you could say that would be respect. Maybe I don't know, but yeah, it's okay. a respect. No, it's a respect for sure, man. And you handle much more animals other than just snakes. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, and it's, I was gonna ask you like, oh, what other animals do you really care for? You know, so you got snakes and what else? So on and so forth. I actually I don't take care of any or have it but i love owls owls are mm. sick they're such cool animals uh i like birds birds are probably right after uh reptiles and stuff for me that's pretty dope that's pretty yeah. dope i uh 
a bird. I, I like the ocean, you know, so I respect yeah. the octopus. Oh, octopuses, yeah, they're okay. cool. They're cool. They're, they're real smart, too. Oh, my God, they're yeah. chaotic. Yeah. They're one of the craziest creatures out there. <laughs> okay, yeah, the octopus, octopi, uh, you know, they're over there. They're from space, if you didn't know that. <laughs> the ones that change camouflage, they're yeah. from space. <laughs> yeah. We talked about this, okay? Um, but, yeah, man, I want to ask you, uh, you know, you were talking about venomous and non-venomous, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I was looking through your TikTok, and I'm watching all these videos, right? And one of yeah. the videos that I found pretty interesting was that there is a tough debate about venomous versus poisonous. Okay. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I wanted to get your input okay. and your stand put on that. So the by definition, uh, venom is injected. Like it's a it's a it's a specialized poison that is injected into prey. I, I think that's word for word the definition of it. Um, but basically that's it. And uh, so anyway, what you'll see is a lot of people who don't do venomous snakes, they'll call them poisonous snakes. Mm. And people who do know venomous snakes they like to get all high and mighty and be like oh it's not poisonous it's venomous and they love to be able to like hop on that high horse and it's just kind of silly because mm. everyone knows what we're talking about you know and at the end of the day venom really just is a specialized poison so i don't know i just think it's silly when people sit there and try to nitpick words when we're all talking about the same thing i don't know that's one of those things that you see in like Facebook groups is that. Yeah, yeah, it's like it's like every hobby and every hobby. There's always those people that just think they're better than everybody. And they always call it like little weird stuff like that. And yeah, that's basically what it is for us. It's called the house rule. It's called the house rule. But I did see what you mentioned. I thought was very interesting in that little video there was that venom is like an English language word. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. OK, so for other cultures, you were saying um, like. Poisonous is just the term that they use because there is no venomous out there yeah, in their type yeah. of uh, environment. Yeah, so I exactly. thought that was a good fact. Yeah, the, uh, we're one of the few countries that actually use the word venom. There's more countries that don't use the word than do. So. Gotcha. That's very interesting. Good good knowledge on you to drop that diamond knowledge for people because that's overlooked. I bet you that's overlooked. Oh, 100% yeah. that's yeah, overlooked. Absolutely. You know? um, but here we go. So, you know, you breed snakes, correct? Or do you just buy them? Uh, right now, it's just buying and selling. I'm hoping to breed. I have uh, three pairs of bush vipers going right now. Um, so we'll see what happens there. Hopefully, I'll have some babies in I don't know, five or six months. But right now, it's a lot of wholesaling. I'll go out there. I'll buy a bunch of venomous snakes from people that I know and uh, acquaintance I've, I've made. And then I'll go back and I'll find educated people who could reasonably keep these animals. And then I'll sell them to them, you know? Gotcha. Are there any like conven uh, conventions for like selling and buying and selling snakes in yeah. this area? Yeah. Well, they they have them all over the U.S. They have reptile expos. A uh, couple of weeks ago, there was one down at Hamburg. It's actually one of the largest venomous snake uh, reptile shows in the United States. Um, and actually, next weekend, yeah, not this weekend. Next weekend, uh, we have an expo in Scranton. Oh at, no shit! Yeah, at the Radisson Hotel. Um, it's the first one that we're having. That's so, tough. Okay. Yeah. And you're a part of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, oh, I'll be down there vending. I'll have a bunch of bush vipers. Um, I'll have a whole array of animals for sale down there. Now, do you work, like, it, are you, like, self-branded, or do you work with another team of people? Um, do you understand what I'm asking? As far as, like, business, like, yeah, the business yeah, yeah, world yeah. of it? Uh, me and my buddy Brandon, we do... Uh, Shout all, out, Brandon. ...all of our work together right now. He's the tarantula guy. He has some of the rarest tarantulas in the world. Uh, before we went to one expo, he's like, oh, God, he's like, if I find one of these, I'm going to buy it. And when we got there, he ended up finding nine, so he bought all nine of them. And uh, damn, he he has a lot. He might have some of the most in the country right now. But um, Brandon, I might have to pick your brain a little bit. So just yeah. be ready to tune in here because you're the Spider Man, and I'm I'm terrified of spiders. <laughs> I have arachnophobia like no other. I said right before this podcast, if they bring a spider, my cameraman Michael would have to run the show. Here I am questioning, what the fuck are you doing, Kev? All right, these are just some of those moments. These are those boundaries that the Middleman Podcast gets me to, and I love it because uh, other than you guys, the other extreme that I think was uh, was the ghouls, ghost hunting. Oh, yeah. I went ghost hunting. That shit was fucked up. That's pretty cool. I used to, back when I was in high school, uh, we had a paranormal investigators group and stuff. We were, we were called the NEPA Paranormal Investigators. We used to do that. No shit. Yeah, it was pretty cool. But I wanted to mention before, too, by the end of the show, we're going to have you holding a tarantula tonight. I didn't, nah, mention, I didn't mention that when nah, I walked in. No, bro, we'll see. I don't no, know about that. We'll see. If you don't want to, you won't have to. But I bet after you're done learning a little bit about it, watching me handle it, I bet you have no issues with it. Just take a sip. <laughs>
We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> oh, man. We'll see. We'll see. Listen, sometimes you got to face your fears. You got to take them head on, man. So that's going to be insane. Okay. All right. Well, um, let me ask you this. So we were talking about the venomous and the poisonous, right? Yeah. Have you ever found yourself in a medical profession, you know, helping other medical professionals uh, understand venom and, you know, cures for venom? Um. That's something you would definitely need a degree in. I'm more, I'm what you'd consider a hobbyist. I don't have any like actual book knowledge uh, behind it. Mm. Um, but that you bring it up, there's actually a couple like Copperheads, for example. Their venom right now is currently used in research for breast cancer. Mm. Um, there's another species of pit viper down in South America called the Bothrops jararaca, jararaca, whatever. Um, and the venom that it uses, I said Jarakaka, <laughs> the venom that, uh, they produce, uh, is used to make ACE inhibitors that we have here. Okay. And that beaded lizard that I have over there, that venom is used in diabetes research currently. Wow. So the doctors out there are already using the venom and there's, uh, awesome places like there's this place called M toxins where they milk all these venomous snakes and they use that venom for, uh, medical research. On a lot of different things, which is real neat. That's good, man. That's good to know because my follow up question was: Is there such a thing as good venom? Yeah, you know? yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. Like, like I said before, with the previous snakes and what their uh, venom does, it's very, like, very huge. ACE inhibitors is I'm not exactly sure what they're for, but I know it has something to do with keeping a heart beating. So, very important stuff. If yes, you, ask me, <laughs> you know. Um, but uh, yeah, but for example, for someone like myself, though. A lot of people think since I have these venomous snakes, I can milk them and sell their venom to all mm. these hospitals and stuff, and it doesn't work like that. I would need to have hundreds of the same snake. I'd have to have sterile environments. A whole, I'm sure there's a whole bunch of paperwork and stuff that has to go through with it. There was real no money in milking venomous snakes the way people think. Yeah, at that point, you're talking to the FDA, and is it really yeah. worth it? You know? No, yeah, <laughs> no that's way too much. Uh, no, nah, but you uh, you handle your life uh, differently, I would say. You handle your life free, okay? You're a free handler. Okay? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You're yeah, a free handler. Yeah, now, for yeah. the people who don't know what free handling is, would you care to explain? So, free handling, oh, God, there's so many definitions. Basically, though, is uh, picking up or handling a venomous snake uh, without a hook. Uh, the hook is the safety tool that keeps the head of the snake away from you. It's very long, shaped like that. Do I, do I have a hook in that box over there? I might have a hook in that box. But you, you use the hook, and you'll grab the snake by the tail. You use the hook to keep the head away from you. Uh, it's a safety tool. Um, there's a lot of different safety tools in venomous snakes. But uh, what I'll do is, is I just won't use the hook. Sometimes I'll handle certain animals and certain species by hand. No, I don't have a hook. But, yeah, sometimes I'll just pick up venomous snakes with my bare hands. And how is that received by the public? It depends who you ask. Um, the more professional people in the venomous snake hobby uh, say it's stupid um, because you're risking a lot. You don't have anti-venom. If you do get bit, you'll take anti-venom for a zoo, which I think is a very solid argument to anybody that picks up venomous snakes, is if you do get bit, you're taking anti-venom away from someone who works in a hospital. Mm. Uh, or not works in a hospital. You're taking anti-venom away from someone who's working in a zoo. So let's say, you know, I get bit. They rush me a bunch of anti-venom the next day. The zookeeper goes in, and she has to pull, pull a gaboon viper out, and then she gets bit. And then it's like, oh, sorry, we don't have anti-venom for you. We used it on Joe Schmo up the street who wanted to pick up a gaboon viper. Mm. Um, with that being said, though, uh, I, a lot of the animals that people— I, I don't post any more pictures or videos of me free handling. Sometimes I'll repeat old videos I've already taken. Yeah. Um, but as far as me free handling, I will with cobras— um, cobras are very easy to free handle and even the more professional side of the hobby is like, yeah, you know, if you're going to pick up a snake, at least it's that. What makes you feel so comfortable to be able to free handle such an animal? Uh, I had a five foot Gaboon Viper female. She was huge. I Ma think I've seen her. She was yeah, beautiful. Massive animal. Um, she was definitely a little bit older, uh, and with age, they tend to calm down a little bit. Um, and she was always, she was always very relaxed, calm. And when you handle a snake, if you're doing it properly, a venomous snake, when, like, I also think there's a big difference between free handling and picking up a snake. If you're free handling, there's a lot of things you're taking into consideration that, you know, there's no outside 
things that are going to disturb you or spook the snake. You're able to watch for shadows because snakes are very reactive to shadows. Making sure you don't have people in there that are moving and jumping and screaming. You're not doing it in a flashy way. If you do it like that, you're picking up a snake. If you're free handling, you're putting a lot of efforts to minimize the risks, you know? Okay. Um, but whenever I was hooking a tailor, very calm, and my hands just working with her one day, and it would, it would be a slow build. It's not one day I just went in there and I picked her up. Is all right, I, I'm, I'm able to do this. She's calm. She's not worried about it. Five minutes, let her go. Come back a couple. And it's not a bond. She never bonded with me. She never trusted me. These snakes don't have feelings. Um, they, they're completely an instinctual animal. So in my head, if I'm doing what I'm supposed to do, I can manipulate them into thinking that nothing's going on around me. Hmm. And That's you'll, interesting. You'll see that in my videos. A lot of people will handle cobras and they'll make them hood up and they'll they'll put on a real flashy performance and i have done that in the past but whenever i post videos of me free handling cobras they're almost never hooded i used to brag that my cobra is never hooded excuse me what do you mean by oh hooded like had a hood over their face yeah so okay. like when they're hooded they, they they'll they come up right and they have their spine will actually flatten out and, okay um and their hood, hoods pop out. And that, that's a defensive cobra. That's a cobra that doesn't want to be messed with. But if you watch my videos with me and my cobras, none of my cobras hood. They're very calm. They're very relaxed. Um, and that's just another thing that, you know, I think is free handling and not picking up a stink. You know what I really like that you said there is that there's no bond, okay? Yeah. You know, you might have had that gaboon python probably when it was young, that, that female, right? Did yeah. you have that when it was young? Oh, no, no, no. I got her. She was a wild-caught animal. That came over from Africa. She was imported from Africa to the United States. And my buddy down in Florida had her for about two years, three years. And uh, then he said he'd sell her, sell her to me. So I bought her. And I only had her for maybe a total of a year mm. in, in total, yeah. And then pass her on. But, yeah, no, yeah. I respect how you were saying that it's like there's no bond there, yeah. right? And that's the that's the level of respect that you have for the animal. And I think that... Although maybe free handling might not, it's frowned upon, but you know, you seem like you are respecting and knowledgeable as to what the dangers are. Yeah. Even, you know? even the people who don't like free handling in the hobby, I'm still friends with them. Mm. You know what I mean? They know, you, you could tell the people who keep venomous snakes for clout or clout chasing, you know what I mean? Um, compared to the people who do actually care about the animals that they have when they have them, you know? Uh, so like, even like the people who are super anti-free handling, Still friends with them. We still talk. You know what I mean? Maybe they don't approve of what I do, but they know I'm not necessarily a risk compared to, you know. Your the, average Joe Schmo. Yeah. I mean, there's some people on Facebook, you see them picking up animals and, like, I cringe. I look at them. I'm like, oh, my God, dude. I was like, you're, they're a liability to the hobby. And it's not hard. Uh, laws are, like, that's a big issue we're having right now is laws are changing everywhere. South Carolina almost had a bill go through last year. Um Somebody got uh, bit by a mamba and then lost Ooh. a zebra spitting cobra. And uh, they tried to change the laws, and they were coming down. And, you know, there's not a lot of people who care about exotic reptiles, you know. So there's not a lot of people fighting on our side. Mm -hmm. But uh, it ended up not going through, thankfully. Um, but, yeah. Are there any bills like that being pushed in our area? Not in our area. Um, Do you know any rules and regulations that obtained your hobby out in this area or is it kind of just like just be smart with it that's all the state of pennsylvania is asking you to do so in the state of pennsylvania it's it's nice because uh the the, the laws are basically just do not mess with native wildlife do not go out and poach rattlesnakes other than that but other than that it, you still keep a professional make sure you have locks on all of your enclosures make sure your door to, so i have a venomous snake room so that room is completely sealed if a snake were to escape my enclosure it wouldn't be able to get out of the room all my enclosures are locked. So this snake would have to es escape out of a locked enclosure and then escape out of a locked room. You know what I mean? Um, safety is obviously a very big concern, but there, there, there's a general rule of thumb when you get into keeping venomous snakes, and the people on Facebook will tell you real quick uh, what uh, what little things and steps you could do to keep it as safe as possible. Okay. Yeah. 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 No, I respect that. I'm excited to see the animals coming out later um, and – I respect the safety aspect of you, bro, so you might get me to hold the tarantula here, okay? Yeah, like I said, I promise you, the the way to get people to want it or to be interested in it isn't by trying to scare them. You see a lot of people on social media, too. One thing that really irks me is, like, there's a lot of people that get all these big retics and these, you know, these 
big, big and they post clickbait videos of them almost getting bit or them almost you know what I mean? And it's stuff like that where it's like, oh well, you know, that's why the public's afraid of snakes. You know, and that's another reason when I do free handle venomous snakes, I'm not doing it for the people that keep venomous snakes. I'm not doing it for the people who are already in the reptile hobby. When I post a video of me free handling a venomous snake, and if you ever scroll through the comments, it's just interesting to see on my TikTok. I a was. Lot, a lot of reptile keepers, they get a lot of, oh, kill your snakes, this and that. If you look at my comments, and it's not because I delete any, people genuinely ask, they're like, hey, man, how are you picking up a Gaboon Viper? I thought they were crazy. I'm like, no, they're not. They're just like any other animal. Just because they have fangs doesn't mean they're more prone to biting than a snake that doesn't have fangs, mm -hmm. you know? And I, I try to show these animals off in a good light. And any, any of my videos, it's always positive. I, I, I want people who aren't interested in these animals to kind of become interested in these animals so that way I can keep my animals and laws stop changing. Respect, respect. Um, one question, you know, we're talking about your TikTok. We're just going to get into that right now, right? Because you have so many interesting videos. Uh, check out his TikTok. Go ahead. It's, it's actually just William, and then it's an underscore snake spear underscore. Yep. All right. Yep. So that's his TikTok. You're booming on that, by the way. You're breaking the algorithm yeah. on TikTok. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> I have to start my own. Um, yeah. But nonetheless, okay, nonetheless, uh, you have some pretty interesting videos. There's one of you free handling a triantula, freaking bare hands, furry yeah. as shit, you yeah. know, and that was pretty, and the, the fangs, I would appear, Brandon, Brandon, were those fangs, you know what video I'm talking about? It was a mole, yeah. Okay, <laughs> get get him, get him the get him the um, microphone here. I'm sorry, that was a mole. What what are you like? It was a mole. He'll explain to you what a mole is and everything. There we go. Yeah, that was a mole. That's oh. all that was. It's basically when tarantulas kind of, like you know how snakes shed their skin. Yes, tarantulas do the same thing. Oh, except it's their whole exoskeleton. What? Yeah. That's crazy. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So you really weren't in any danger. Nope. No. No. Uh, see, like, it's no, videos he was like capping that. The whole it, yeah, he was capping. <laughs> it looks like a cool video, though, to people who don't know it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's interesting, but like, it's a video that got you interested, right? Mm hmm. 100%. Yeah. 100%. Because I was like, this mofo's crazy. Now yeah. I realize he's just a regular dude with a skin. <laughs> yep. Thank you for, thank you for uh, telling me that, Brandon. Appreciate you. Um, and then there was another video of you holding uh, a scorpion in the palm of your hand. Yep. Okay. Don't tell yep. me that was a mold. No, no. no okay, that was, I was moving. <laughs> that was a real scorpion, but that was an Asian forest scorpion. So that scorpion, if it were to bite me, would do absolutely no damage mm. or sting me. I should say if it stings me, it would be less than a bee sting. They're very not potent. So like, again, that's something that looks really scary, but it's not. Gotcha. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. All right. So to a Joe Schmo like myself, this guy's crazy as fuck, but in all reality, he's doing the right thing. I respect it. Yeah, I respect absolutely. it. Absolutely. Um, and then what else? What else? Uh, the blue, there was this blue and I want to say maybe like pinkish. It was such a unique colored snake. It's your second one a video. It's pinned. Oh, that was a leucistic monocled cobra. A leucistic monocled cobra. It was that cobra. white cobra. I yeah. was pulling its tail out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a leucistic. I named him Frank. He was an asshole. Oh, I don't know if I could curse. No, yeah, you yeah. curse. <laughs> yeah, he is, dude, he was, he was mean, dude. He was a mean snake. He would write me notes at night saying, like, yo, when you wake up, you're fucked. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was crazy. Where did you get that guy from? Or um, did you just run into him? Let me think. I got him... I think I got him off a buddy of mine in Ohio, but I could be mistaken. And that's another cool thing about the Savvy too is like I'm friends with people from all over the U.S. and uh, you'd be surprised the lengths will travel to do you know trade or sell snakes. Uh, I've driven as far west as like Kentucky before. Damn. Yeah, yeah, no, it was pretty crazy. Yeah. All right, so yeah, that snake was a uh, very very cool. And how you kept that for how long? Since it was an asshole, you probably got rid of it real quick. No, no, angry <laughs> cobras are the they're the fun ones. Um, but we did end up selling him to one of my buddies out in I think he lives in Michigan. Uh, but he had a female leucistic monocle cobra, and you know it would be better for him to be able to breed it so that way he could pass on the babies, you know, keep the lineage alive and stuff like that. Gotcha. Yeah, that snake yeah. was very. Uh, it was extremely cool. The colors were so unique. Do you know why that is, that that snake has obtained that color pattern? Yeah, so it's a, what they call a morph, a genetic mutation. So they have visual genes, and then they have genes that they carry that are het. So it's heterogeneous genes. Those are ones you can't see. Um, for a loosey venomous snake like that, it needs, uh, what does it need? I don't know. I'm not good on genetics. It's okay. that, there's a whole other world. So like, there's, like as far as breeding goes, you have... Uh, 
jeans that show and then hat jeans and then you have two hats you pair them together they produce a visual i don't know all the genetics behind my i've never i yeah no I it's in the jeans yeah it's, it literally it's, it's in, in the jeans, jeans. Yeah. <laughs> that's pretty cool man and then you had that gaboon python i've seen you uh you know, helping it shed its skin, you know, yeah. so that was, that was a pretty yeah. sick video of you. Yeah. Yeah. I walked in my room one day and I saw, I saw the head come off and I was like, oh, this would make an awesome video because she is very calm and everything. Mm -hmm. And like when a snake is in shed, they get a little bit more aggressive. Um, so once the head came off, I pulled her out. I let her get a little bit more off and, uh, it made for a good video though. The, yeah. uh, the ASMR on it. Yeah. You know, ASMR really for sure. For yeah, sure. No that was pretty dope, bro. That was pretty dope. Now, have you ever been bit? Yeah, uh, I got bit by a venomous snake about two or three years ago. It was July 4th. Uh, I was down at my buddy's house in Philly, Trevor Anderson. He's a good friend of mine. Uh, we're still friends now. Um, we were down at his house, and uh, I was only keeping venomous snakes, you know, not, not very long. So I didn't have a ton of experience. Um, but anyway, we were down there, and we were free handling venomous snakes. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, I had I was holding a bush viper, and then we put the bush viper away, and then I picked up a zebra spitting cobra, and then we put the zebra spitting cobra away, and then there was a copperhead that we had, and uh, I pull it out, and its head popped up, and I look at everybody. I was like, you see, it's very, it's in a defensive position right now. The snake doesn't want to be messed with. Like, now watch me try to pick it up. So I hooked the venomous snake, and nice. <laughs> I, I have a video of it too. Um, but I'll never share that. Anyway, so I pick up the copperhead on the hook, and I go to drop it on my hand, and I got this really bad tattoo where I got bit. It's supposed to be two fangs, but it faded out. And uh, as soon as I got bit, I popped up real quick, and I was like, yo, I was like, I got bit. I was like, we got to go to the hospital. And I was making that joke all night. Oh, <laughs> I was making that joke all night. I was telling everybody, yo, I got bit, yo, I got bit. So finally, I popped up. I'm like, yo, I got bit. And I was like, well, that's not funny. And I'm like, no, we got to go to the hospital right now. And I put my hand in the air for the blood and uh, some with the venom. Yeah. And uh, anyway, my other buddy, Cap, he drove me right to the hospital. It was July 4th in the middle of COVID. Wow. And uh, I get into the hospital and my phone was dead. And I was like, oh, this is going to suck. So the doctor runs in and I was like, listen, I was like, I just got bit by a copperhead. I was like, I need Crofab. And I was like, I need it quickly. And he goes, mm. he's like, are you sure you got bit by a venom snake? I was like, yeah. I was like, I was like, I'm positive. I got bit by a venomous snake. I need Crofab. And he goes, all right, we're gonna monitor you for a little bit, and then we'll uh, we'll see where we go from there. And he turned around and he walked out. And I'm sitting there and I'm calling for a nurse and I'm calling for anybody. I'm like, yo, I was like, I need to get Crofab. I need anti venom this and that. And no one was coming to like talk to me or anything. So I'm I I know of a doctor down in Texas. Uh, I won't say his name on here, but uh, he. He's a toxicologist, mm -hmm. and uh, I had my buddy call his hospital, and he had to call the hospital that I was at to convince the doctor I was envenomated because he didn't believe wow. me. So anyway, by the time the doctor comes in, I with a marker, I started tracking my swelling to see how fast the venom was going on my arm. You were tracking your what? I'm sorry. Tracking uh, the swelling in my hand. So after you oh, get bit, swelling, okay. yeah, when, after you get bit, you'll get gradual sw swelling that progresses, mm -hmm. and... Uh, I, I honestly, I saw it on a snake bite TV show when I was like 16 or 17. Uh, it was on Animal Planet. I didn't know why they tracked the venom. I didn't know why I was, but I was. And the, anyway, the doctor and the nurse came in, and the first question was, is like, what are you doing? And I was like, I'm tracking the venom. <laughs> and he's like, why? I was like, I don't know. <laughs> and uh, But I knew you were supposed to track the venom. I knew you were supposed to do that. Anyway, so he's like, yeah, That's listen. Funny. He's like, he's like, I just got off the phone with Dr. He said, you got envenomated, and uh, we're going to start looking for anti-venom for you now. I was like, you're going to start looking for anti-venom now? And he's like, yeah. And I was like, dude, it's been at this point, it's been like three or four hours. And uh, so finally, they found anti-venom for me. It was down in Delaware. And uh, so I got helicoptered down, which is ridiculous. What? It was ridiculous. Dude, this is a story. It was a gnarly bite. It was a gnarly bite, but like, it, I, I didn't need all of that by any means. Uh they gave me a bunch of pain medication. So, like, I wasn't very coherent when they were asking me questions. And they were like, we're going to send you to this hospital. I was like, all right. And then after that, I woke up and I was in Delaware. And when I was, I, I'm getting wheeled in. And they were telling me they got me, like, Crofab. They got me Crofab or whatever. So they started giving me anti-venom. And I had, I went into anaphylactic shock. 
So I can't like breathe. I couldn't talk. I couldn't. I was just like, and the nurses are like, "What's wrong? Like you gotta you gotta say something." I'm like, and she's like, uh, the one nurse was like, "Oh, I think he's going into anaphylactic shock." And uh, two nurses ran out and hit me with epipens at the same time. And then after that, it was just three days of just being incoherent in the hospital, drooling all over myself. And uh, my mom came out and picked me up. What a life. What it, a story. I, I told that doctor like 12 times. I was like, I got bit by a copperhead. He's like, I don't believe you. I was like, why would I lie about this? He's like, I don't, I just, I don't think so. Oh, man, it was tough. That's crazy, man. Yeah. That's chaotic to think that your life is in a balance right there. And you're like, listen, I know. I know. <laughs> well, I still can't feel my finger. Uh, so what happened was is, too, while after everything happened, I'm sent in the hospital or whatever, uh, a, a surgeon came in, and uh, she, they were going to prep me for a fasciotomy. And a fasciotomy is when they'll cut you open to relieve some of the swelling. And I just remember uh, Dr. He was like, do not get a fasciotomy. He's like, 99% of the time, you don't need it, whatever. And I just kept saying, no fasciotomy, no fasciotomy. And... Uh, but yeah, now I can't feel it. I, I guess the swelling must have been too much and it must have crushed everything. I don't know. That's crazy, man. Yeah. That's quite the story there, man. I was not expecting that. So kudos to you for being here still. Shit, man. Quite the life. Okay. Well. Yeah, it's pretty neat. So uh, listen, I got a question for you. This is a fun question. Um, my yeah. one buddy asked it because with this podcast, I have someone who helps me with questions, right? And when I read this question last night, I started dying. I was like, this guy, bro. I'm like, you did ask. Did you really ask this question? But the question is, ready? Do you think we'll ever see a day where snakes as pets are as common as dogs and cats? No, definitely not. Definitely not. No, no. I was like, fuck no. I'm like, hold on. I'm like, Mike, think about that question. It's, I'm like, That's It's <laughs> a very acquired taste. You either love them or you don't. It's not. Yeah, no. You know what? One snake I will say that I was drawn to on your profile was, um, I had the name and you said it before and I'm drawing a blank right now. Damn it. I know I have it in the notes right here. The Bush Viper. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Bush, Bush Viper. Viper. Yes, the Bush Vipers look sick. They're yeah. beautiful, yep. man. They come in a ton of different colors. They come in a bunch of different patterns. Uh, I have uh, a buddy down in Texas. Uh, he breeds them. He's produced these things called tigers where they have these bands on their eyes. Oh, man, they're Whoa. stunning. Yeah, swamps, they're, they're stunning snakes. Some of my favorites, without a doubt. Yeah. A bush viper. Um, so one thing I love about the bush viper is the pattern. You know, you were saying the pattern, the skin, the texture. It looks rigid. Is it rigid? Yeah, yeah. They okay. have uh, keeled scales. So the keeled scales, they come up, and it's kind of like the outside of a uh, pineapple, where like the, it kind of like fans out. I don't know if that was a good way to... No, no, it. no, I get it. But yeah, so like <laughs> they have the keeled scales where they come out, and uh, they are rough, and it also helps them grip trees and whatnot uh, when they're climbing. Uh out in Africa. Okay, so that's why they have that as a part of their feature. Uh, I mean, I don't know if that's necessarily an adaptation, if that's what you mean, mm -hmm. but I'm sure it helps. Yeah, no, that shit's pretty cool. I, I've If I were to get one snake, I would start with a, well, not maybe start, but I'm like, nah, the bush viper looks beautiful, you know? So, oh, yeah. You have that's a few right. of those, though? You, see, you, uh, see, you got three, right? And you're trying to breed them a little bit? We got, what, 20, 22, 22 bush vipers. Wow. Yeah. That's sick. Okay. And are they hard to maintain? Are any of these animals hard to maintain? What What do you need to take in the precaution? What do you need to take in mind if you were to start up this hobby? Every time you open up a cage with a venomous snake, you are immediately putting yourself at risk and everyone. That, that's my biggest thing is safety. So I always dive into that. As mm -hmm. soon as you open up that enclosure, you're putting yourself at risk and everybody in that room that's with you at risk. As soon as that say, accidents happen, things happen, you can't control everything. As soon as that enclosure is open, you and everybody in that room is at risk. One of my big things, as I always say, is when I bring people over to my venomous snake room, it's if I have a snake hook in my hand, you probably want to have a snake hook in your hand too. I think that's a good rule of thumb. Um, when I was first getting into the hobby, I was traveling around, I was meeting a lot of people, and some people claim to have, you know, that they were able to do this and this and this, and then all of a sudden I'm getting put into rooms, you know, with venomous snakes in a very dangerous situation with someone who doesn't have much more experience than I. Mm. You know what I mean? Um, but again, we learn, we grow, we change. But, uh, yeah, so that's the biggest thing is just is safety is always first. Make sure you have locks. Make sure you understand that, you know, wherever this venomous snake is, you're putting, wherever that venomous snake, you're putting everyone's life at risk because that's, it's very serious. It's not a joke. I understand. Um, but uh, other than that, man, it is once you understand all the safety aspects of it, 
just like keeping any other animal. Mm. Um, you got to give a you got to make sure that its enclosure is clean. Make sure that it has adequate space, good airflow. If they like it a little bit hotter, you know, make sure you can make it a little bit hotter. If they like it colder, make it colder. Stuff like that. Just the biggest thing with venomous snakes, it just boils down to safety. Is like with many things, but yeah. Now I know we keep talking about enclosures, and I know you have a few enclosures, and you have brought a few friends. So I think it's about time we start tapping into that. And uh, which one do we want to start with here? Would you you want to grab me the albino bull snake? We'll start with. I probably shouldn't have said. I should have just. That's all right. It'll be cool though. Yeah. It's actually not albino either. It's a, a hypo white sided bull snake. So bull snakes are found in the United States. Um, they come in a bunch of different crazy patterns. Pull it out over here. All right. And like I said, don't get I'm calm as hell. I'm calm as can be. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a bull snake. It's a hypo white-sided bull snake. So back to those genetics and morphs that I was talking about. This one, it, this isn't what a normal bull snake would look like in the wild, or what they, or what people call wild types. Uh, they'd be brown, black. Uh, white. Um, as you can see, this thing is ridiculous. It's yellow and pink. Yeah. You know, you don't see a lot of snakes like that. Um, and this is a female. Uh, they get a bad rap for being very snippy, these guys, but as you can see, it's not a snippy animal. You want to give it a try hole on her? In the motion that you are? We could do it like this if you want. I could keep her head in my left hand, and then you can mess with her tail. I'm all right with that. I'd, I'd rather rock with that. That's very interesting. Yeah, pretty cool, okay. right? Yeah. You think wow. it'd be slimy? No, no, I didn't. I didn't think it'd be slimy at all. I like the way they move, though. They're very interesting. Yeah, it's you know, cool, right? With the tongue, you know, what's the key aspect of the tongue for a snake? Uh, for the snake, it's for them to smell. It's to get a uh, sense in the air that's surrounding, so that way they know what's around them. Maybe mm. it might be prey or predator. And how often does she eat? Uh, this girl eat a mouse well, about once a week. Um, when she gets full size, so this is... Still relatively young and small. Um, they'll get about six, seven feet. Uh, when she's an adult, she could probably take uh, jumbo rats. Um, and then her feeding will slow down uh, tremendously. It's about once a month. Now, she is venomous. No, she is not. She is not venomous. No, if she was venomous, I wouldn't be holding here okay. like this. Yeah, just like that. So yeah. that's why you offered me to hold it like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? Yeah. <laughs> I might have to try I, If this. you get bit. So <laughs> this is like another thing. A lot of people are very afraid of snake bites, right? A mm. cat bite is way worse than a snake bite. A snake bite, you, you probably won't bleed. They have, ro they have a lot of teeth that they do. Very, very, very small. And they're not tremendously sharp. It might break some skin, but other than a little scratch... It's not going to be so bad. How do you know if she's in a defensive position? Um, if you were to get bit, it would be from pob probably you anti antagonize her if you were booping her on the head mm. or something, if you kept, like, tapping her head. Um, but other than that, like, people say snakes will go into an S formation. That's a pretty good tell, but snakes could also just bite without giving any warning. Now, how should we do this transfer, and how do we transfer it right back to you in a, in a, put in your a hands, matter of seconds? Just put your hands out like this. Okay. And just be very calm, all right? All I right. promise you, you won't get hurt. That's it. Very well. Are you nervous about her head getting close to you? No, I'm, I'm fucking You're good. with it. I'm fucking with it. A good way to keep a snake calm, too, is keep the tail secure. Okay. Keep yeah, the tail, the tail secure. Gotcha. Yeah. I'm trying to rope, rope her back around, though. How do I do that? You could just, yeah, go ahead. Bring the tail under your hand, just like all that, right. yeah. All right, come on. And then bring the other hand right by your head. She won't get you. Oh, ah, okay. There you go. She's running. <laughs> oh, yeah. They're active snakes. They, they move a lot. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Wow. How about that? All right. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. That's fucking dope. <laughs> Pretty cool, right? Who would have thought? Not me. <laughs> yeah. See you later, pal. Wow. <laughs> that that just that. happened. Okay. Interesting. Thank you for that. Thank you for that, Will. That's right. awesome. And All how right, long have you had her? Uh, This girl I've had for, I don't know, maybe a year and a half year and a half maybe two years life expect um, uh life expectancy uh 15 to 18 okay. roughly give or take uh she's actually for sale though if anyone's interested non-venomous awesome starter snake do people just hit you up on uh facebook uh facebook is where i do most of my business i'd say about 90 percent of my business comes from facebook uh instagram i made a couple of sales here here and there um tiktok i would never sell anything to anybody from tiktok tiktok uh, 
Yeah, the, you got to see. I have people messaging me saying, hey, can I buy Venom off of you? And I'm like, no, that's so weird. And I was like, <laughs> definitely don't ever message me about that again. What are you going to do with it? <laughs> I, exactly. Uh, but I get cool. I do get cool messages, too. Um, I try to be really active with anybody who does follow me because, um, obviously, I really appreciate it. I think that's awesome. Uh, so I get a lot of messages, people asking me for fangs, Gaboon fangs. I'll sell you a fang because it's not going to hurt anybody, and they're really neat to have. Uh, Gaboon sheds, or if any, if anybody wants any kind of snake sheds, but uh, I wish I had a picture of it. But it's like this snake shed or whatever, and you could frame them on like uh, frames. Okay, know. yeah. But anyway, <laughs> I I, I, sh- I ship out uh, sheds, snake fangs, um, little like whatever non-animal animal related things do the fangs like do they shed their fangs or yeah they, oh okay yeah so they shed their fangs kind of like we shed fingernails i guess no shit yeah interesting okay well that's uh that's interesting so what do we got next my friend enjoy your drink you want another animal yeah let's go i mean right, let's we got get... 20 minutes man if you want to put on an exhibit here we can do it let's you know, get we got, uh we got 20 minutes to put on an exhibit for the people watching grab the grab the beaded let's get into it let's get some cool shit uh, yeah, you can bring both lizards over. I'm going to start with the beaded, though. If I get bit on here, that'd be awesome, dude. Oh, well, not for me, but for you. It'd be fucking awesome. Bro. Yeah, you would. Oh, it's clickbait, man. <laughs> uh, all right, so this is a Rio Fuerte bearded li- or beaded lizard. Bearded lizard. Uh, the Rio Fuerte beaded lizard. Where is this native to? Uh, South America. Um, they, uh. They're slightly arboreal. I wouldn't. No, I wouldn't want to go as far as to say it's arboreal, but uh, this species of beaded lizard uh, climbs a lot, and they're found in a more tropical region, a little bit more humid, a little bit more moisture. Um, very cool, very active animals. Uh, they are venomous. Uh, they're a true venomous lizard, um, wow. like their cousins, the Gila monsters. Um, beaded li- lizards. They do not have fangs. They have grooved teeth. Mm. Um, that they use and they'll chew on you and uh their venom won't kill you uh there's never been a reported fate of death i should say okay but you'll wish you're dead it's a very gnarly bite it's a very bad bite um and uh what does he typically he or she they're egg eaters by nature come here i'm sorry egg eaters yeah they're egg eaters (laughs) everything is under control is that the one that you compared to a Pokemon animal? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, in the wild, they're typically egg eaters. Uh, that's what their diet mostly consists of. But if they get their mouths on... It's uh, gnarly, dude. Wow. Yeah, very cool. Very calm animal. Very relaxed. Uh, this is, even though it's venomous, it's one of the animals, you know, that you could pick up without anybody batting an eye. Because uh, if you do get bit... You're not going to die and make a bad name. It's just going to hurt. <laughs> yeah, it's going to hurt really bad. Uh, they have been known, though, after you get uh, people getting bit, uh, they'll leave you with heart issues. Oh. I forget what the term was that they used, but uh, still pretty gnarly stuff. Yeah, that's very, very cool. You have a name for it? Yeah, Narcos. Narcos. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, nah, that's cool, man. I, when I'm looking at this animal, I'm thinking about uh, just Godzilla. Yeah. You know, the miniature yeah. Godzilla, seriously. I had uh, an alligator when I was... 15 or 16 years old i bought it offline and uh i named it reptar and i thought i was the <laughs> cleverest thing in the world yeah. i like it man so like you were talking about how you were trying to let the animals uh not suspect anything you know is that repeat emotion of just letting them walk is yeah. that like letting them know that you're just you're... yeah it keeps him active it keeps his attention if i were to wave my finger like right in front of his face like this mm-hmm. he'd probably bite it mm-hmm. uh thinking that it's prey but right now he thinks he's just walking he appreciates the warmth of my hands uh reptiles being cold-blooded they don't control their body temperature so rubbing down on my 97 or 98 degree hands is pretty nice for him nice man that's awesome thanks for bringing that guy along oh yeah oh yeah so uh a cool adaptation that a lot of lizards have uh they'll actually have they have a third eye behind their head uh, so that way when shadows wave across it, they know it, it, it's basically a third eye that sees shadows because a lot of their predators are birds that come down and swipe on them. Yeah. Now, I know bearded dragons have them. A lot of people have that. I know bearded dragons have that third eye. 
I'm not 100% anymore if the Beaded Lizard still does. So maybe if somebody out there knows Beaded Lizards, they can let me know. What do we got going on here? This guy's really cool. This guy, you can hold too. Okay, cool. This guy's <laughs> really cool. So this is an adult crested gecko. Oh, okay. Yeah, these guys, uh, these guys are known to jump. Oh, and he'll lick you. Yeah, he did. He did lick me. <laughs> Do I taste good, buddy? Yeah. I'll hold him. Come on. Uh, my my hands must smell. It's okay. <laughs> so they oh they jump, huh? Yeah. I could feel it because it's got these feet that feel so gooey. Yeah, he's getting ready to launch now. Oh, is he? Okay. Yeah, it's okay. No, he'll, he'll be okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, cool thing about crested geckos is so they have a prehensile tail. So they have a tail that they could use to hold their body weight. Okay. But on the same token, if a predator were to grab their tail, or if they needed to, if they got bit on the arm maybe, uh, they could actually drop that tail. Uh, but they won't regrow it like many oh. other geckos. A lot of geckos, if they drop their tail, they'll regrow one. Crested geckos will not. Dude, this is awesome, man. That's cool, right? And where's this guy from? Uh, I'm not too sure. He's got a nice face going on here. Yeah, he has a big head. So crested geckos are bred a lot like... Uh, Bullies, the dog, everyone wants the big-headed, crested geckos. Mm. Okay. Yeah, no, I, honestly, so I'm going to be honest with you, bro. I've been looking at, uh, people are like, you need an animal, Kev, because uh, I've been very negative lately, you know, but pets, for some reason, always bring people's, bring bring them up a little bit. And I was like, I want to see what I want to get, you know, and that seems pretty interesting. I would, because I was like, I don't want a dog, I don't want a cat. Mm-hmm. Um, I want something that's low maintenance, but something with a tear like this, where it's like, it's interesting. It's not yeah. just a goldfish. Yeah. No, you know. these things are super cool. Um, you don't need a huge enclosure when they're an adult. Um, you got an arboreal enclosure because they like to climb up and down. And after you set up the enclosure, all you really have to do is mist them maybe once or twice a week. And uh, what they eat is called Pangea, and it's this little packet of, like, powder and dust. And you mix it up with some water, and then they'll come over and they'll lick it. And, like, every two days you just put a new one in and take the old one out. So it's a liquid that they eat? Not really uh, It's more of, like, it's an applesauce consistency. Mm, okay. it's, you get this powder, you mix it up with water. It's like an applesauce consistency. That's awesome, bro. Yeah. Two two for two. We hold the animals out here. It's just yeah. crazy. Who, who would have thought? Not me. Should we... Uh, we'll leave that one for last. Uh, let's bring out... We'll start off easy. Let's All go right. with the cockroaches first. These motherfuckers are huge. Yeah. <laughs> Let's start off easy. And uh, that last animal that I was just holding, the gecko there. It's yes. a gecko, correct? Correct. Yeah. Um, That's a crested gecko. What type of uh, atmosphere is it usually in a damp atmosphere? A little uh, bit atmosphere? more humid, yeah. Definitely a little bit more humid. You put a lot of sphagnum moss in the enclosure. Um and uh, relatively warm, probably around like 76 to 80 degrees. I'm not too articulate with non-venomous stuff. Mm. Uh, I spent a lot of my time uh, learning. Um, but for a general rule of thumb, that would be a good idea for it. How much bigger is that guy going to get? That's an adult. Oh, so that's an adult. Ba- yeah, okay. babies start off about this big. That's an adult. He's a pretty big one, too. Oh, nice. So these guys, I know almost nothing about, but they're super cool because they make <laughs> this really crazy noise. I'm going to put it up to the mic and see if I can get them to do the little squeal. Okay. These guys kind of freak me out. I mean, shit. I'm not touching that, bro. <laughs> can you guys hear it? I don't know if I could hear it with the microphone. <laughs> what type of animal is this? This is a tiger cockroach. Tiger cockroach. Yeah. And they make a squeal. Yeah, so it's almost like a, a hissing noise. Is that a good way to describe it? Hissing noise? Oh, yeah. Hmm. There's another one in here. <laughs> <laughs> camera shy. I want camera shy. Yeah, I planned ahead for this. I knew something like this would happen. <laughs> Never leave home without two cock- cockroaches. <laughs> <laughs> and where the hell do you find these guys? Uh, in the wild. Okay, just like. Maybe. Oh no, no, no! I meant, did you mean in the wild or like at like? Did I find these at a show? I'm sorry. I hope that, <laughs> I hope that didn't come off. <laughs> Dickhead. <laughs> uh, no. Um, I have no idea where they come from in the wild. Okay. Uh, I don't. Again, these beetles. Uh, wow. One of our friends offered it to us. Madagascar, possibly. Look, he's just going in there. Yeah, dude, I don't, I don't like bugs like that either. Is Brandon the guy for the bugs? Uh, he's definitely better with them than I am. Yeah. <laughs> I could do it. I just don't know. Okay, okay. No, it's like doing a worm. 
Oh, ooh, ooh it's on you. Okay. <laughs> I hope this guy squeals. Let's hear it. Yeah, I hear it. When I, when I go into the room, I can hear him. I'm not hurting the fact. Oh, I think I heard a click. Do they say bite? Could they bite? Probably not. Right? <laughs> if it's got a mouth. If it's got a mouth. It's poisonous. I'll eat it right now. <laughs> All right. They both made me liars. I really promise they do hiss. Tickle, tickle. <laughs> I'm out here tickling You're bold. You're yeah. bold, bro. That's yeah. crazy. You okay. want to hold one? No, I'm good. Are you I'm, sure? Yeah, 100%. Bro. Are you positive? 100%. You might get me to hold a spider. Yeah, the, I don't like holding these things either. I wouldn't hold You know what else is real scary? You ever see those centipedes or millipedes or whatever? Yeah. Centipedes. Yeah. So centipedes, they have really gnarly bites, actually. It's uh, kind of like, I don't know, underrated. Um, But... I I would I pay I had a pet one for a little bit, and uh, having that crawl off crawl up my arm, they have like obviously like hundred some legs, but the grip strength that they have when they squeeze down when they run, oh man, it hurts. I almost crawled out of my skin. All right, um, let's see, what do we have left? You can hold the spider. I'm gonna maybe hold the spider. Bro. All right, bring the. I think I have to. I think I have to. Yeah, yeah. Bring the camera over. So talk to me about the spider that you got, Brandon. When we get to that point, because you're gonna have to convince me that it's okay to hold this thing. I might end up convincing you not to. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> um, I don't. I don't know if you're gonna be. Able, are you gonna be able to get that on camera? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, we can move the stuff here, unless you want to put it up at the edge of the table. Oh, no, no, don't free handle it. <laughs> no, absolutely not. We're good. <laughs> so this is my favorite species of venomous snake in the whole world. Um, I love gaboons. It was the first venomous snake I had. I've always had them. I always will have them. Um, they're extremely underrated. Uh, people just call them boring. Uh, they don't move a lot. They say they're an ambush predator. They're an apex ambush predator. They'll sit in the same spot for months, just waiting for a single meal, eat the meal, move around, find a new spot, and then they just wait again. Uh, huh. Their camouflage is insane. Uh, and with my enclosures now, I do them all bioactive. So there's, there's live plants. There's live bugs. Um, and uh, we also try to replicate, uh, obviously, the environment that they're from. So a ton of leaf litter and stuff like that. Now, the enclosure that the other enclosure, I have two gaboons. Um, well, I have two that are this size, um, and they share an enclosure. And you'll look in there, and it'll take you a minute to find either one of them. Mm. Um, again, that's two gaboons and a little glass box. And you'll sit there, and you'll scratch your head for a second trying to find them. The camouflage is insane. That's wild, bro. And uh, you, you obtained the gaboons. I saw that on your TikTok. You know, they'll always have a special place in your heart, and it's because it's your first venom and steak. Um. It's that and and a little bit because no one else likes them is why I like mm, them. Okay. When people all kind of get on a trend and they think something's cool, and I'm like, nah, it's kind of stupid. I was like, I'm going to go against that one. I was like, gaboons are sick. Because yeah. they are. They really are. <laughs> nah, that's pretty bold of it to sit there, you know, and, and that's its nature is to be camouflaged. How do you, when, if, you probably don't freehandle them anymore, do you? No. Okay. No, I do not. I have, so now I have this glove that I have, uh, and I, and I still do. Like, I'll, I'll occasionally, like, if I'm working with Cobras or whatever or something. And just now at this point in my life, I got, I don't want to risk anything. Yeah. Um, and there's, it's just not worth it. I, I've picked up already. I, I've picked up Taipans. I've picked up King Cobras. I've picked up Brussels. But I've picked up all. Um, I've done what I needed to do. I got lucky, whatever, and now I'm done with it. <laughs> got lucky. Um, <laughs> but... I say as a joke. I am educated. I was very smart with what I did. Um, but now I have this glove. It's a it's a hex armor glove, and it's bite resistant. Mm -hmm. um, it's not bite proof because that means one hundred percent. But it's bite resistant, and uh, the, their fangs at this size aren't big enough to pierce it. So I use these gloves now, basically, to get that little, uh, to get that itch scratched. You know what I mean? I appreciate that, bro. You know, I'm second guessing this spider right now. Nope. And I'm not second guessing that bringing it on the show. I'm saying I think we should save it for tea time because we're going to start wrapping up the Middleman podcast. How do you feel about that? That's fine with me, man. Are you all right like with that? Plan. Absolutely. All right. Heck yeah. Let's let's go ahead and save the spider for tea time. You want to see some crazy shit? Tap into tea time strictly on YouTube. Not brought to you by, but inspired by Arizona Ice Tea. But before that, all right, Will, I like to give the floor to my guests. Okay. If there's any messages that you want to share, anything that, uh, you know, 
people can find you on social media, so on and so forth. You know, uh, the floor is yours. Any positive messages? Have at it, my friend. Um. All right. So first, follow me on Instagram, uh, Fanged Valley or uh, William Shakespeare. Uh, TikTok is William Shakespeare too, and definitely don't add me on Facebook. Uh, <laughs> what was I going to say? So I don't know. I guess the biggest thing is. is if anybody has free time, there's a lot of laws that are going on with our hobby right now. It takes like five minutes or not even probably takes like two minutes to like sign those silly little things that you might see shared on Facebook. But uh, USA Arc's fighting it right now. Um, but down in Florida, they're banning a ton of wildlife uh, or not wildlife, a uh, bunch of pets and stuff. So if you have time, just take 10 minutes and try to see if you can find anything online that helps fight uh, all these laws that are trying to be passed. Um yeah, that's really it. Appreciate that, man. Hey, I just want to let you know, you did one hell of a job, okay? Thanks, bro. You, you really that. got loosened up here. You know, you were educated. A lot of people got some really great information. So everyone give a round of applause here to my boy, Will, because he was nervous coming into the show. Thank you. Thank you. He was nervous coming thank into you. the show, but you did fantastic, man. So thank you for joining me here on the Middleman Podcast. Everyone stick around for tea time. Not brought to you by, but inspired by Arizona Ice Tea. And with that being said, I am the man in the middle, signing out. Peace.